YouTube is live, sir. Okay, okay. We'll wait some more. Second day. I lay there. I lay. Or we do. Or you do phone call. Okay, sir. Shock. What day? Sir, YouTube live is there. Record act is there. Okay, okay. One minute. One minute is there. I will start. After four, we can start. Sir, it's four. Yeah. So good evening to one all present here. I'm happy and honored to welcome all the participants uh, for this online phase four program uh, designed for the Nirmiti Kendra engineers. So actually the uh, topic on the construction management and uh, engineering economics, this is the upskilling program. Uh, we have taken up just 40 days back. Number of days scheduled is 52 days and it is a four phase pro program. This is almost a 40th lecture, a 41st lecture today. I welcome all the participants and speaker of the day, Dr. Jagdish Vengala, uh, Head EDC and Innovation Center, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, PVP Siddhartha Institute of Technology, Vijayawada, and also a former HOD and Department of Civil Engineering, BMSIT, Bangalore, and former scientist of IPI, RTI, I think industrial poly. IPRI, that is a Bollywood, sir. IP plywood, plywood. Ah, sorry, a Indian uh, Plywood Industries Research Training Institute, and it is supported by Ministry of Environmental and Forest, Bangalore. Former design engineer, Tarsus Research Foundation in India, Bangalore. Welcome you, sir. I'm happy and honored to welcome on behalf of the center, on behalf of the participants, and my own. I welcome you for this uh, today's uh, online. Uh, guest lecture on a special topic on bamboo as a building material. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation and sparing our valuable time with us. And uh, I'm thankful to you for your uh, uh, presence and uh, participation in this uh, upskilling program for Nirbiti Kendra engineers. And also I welcome our director, sir, Srinivas Kulkarni, sir, and other officials of the board. And also welcome all the Nirbiti Kendra engineers and project directors. And also some of the few students from Construction Management Training Institute, they are also participated. I welcome all of you uh, for this uh, lecture, online lecture on a special topic on bamboo as a building material. See, this topic is finalized because all the Nirbhiti Kendra engineers can think of, this is one of the building material available, not always use concrete. See, concrete is highly energy efficient material and it is not a sustainable material. Then I request all the engineers to interact with the speaker. So this is a special lectures arranged only for the Nirmiti Kendra engineers to take care of whenever there is a low cost building materials you have to construct in a different areas, forest area, some other areas. It is highly useful. And also I'm happy to welcome all the students of NCET. Before going to the lecture, just a brief introduction about the speaker of the day. Uh, just introduction, just for the August gathering. Dr. Jagdish Pengala obtained his doctoral degree on seismic response study of bamboo-based constructions from ETU Belgaum during 2015, for which he confirmed with Indian National Academy of Engineers innovative PhD. So, sir has did PhD in bamboo research, uh, uh, bamboo research, bamboo as a building material, and he is going to share a lot of information with respect to that. And thesis by the INEIE, he obtained his master degree in construction technology from BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore in 2002, and a bachelor degree in civil engineering from Koneru Lakshmanya College of Engineering, Vijayawada in 1998, and also worked as a design engineer, two years Torsional Research Foundation, Bangalore. He joined IPI, RTI, and the Ministry of Environmental and Forest Government of India as a scientist in August 2004 and worked for 11 years 
at the institute with a passion for teaching he left the government job and started a formal teaching in 2015 at bms institute of technology second campus elanka bangalore and worked during the august 2015 to may 18 he worked as a head of the department during 2016 to 18 he has got more than 21 years of research industry teaching experience he was a recipient of outstanding concrete engineer andhra pradesh for the year 2021 congratulations professor by the ici indian concrete institute vijayawada center and professor v ramakrishna eng scientist award for the year 2008 and 2009 by the indian concrete institute he was a recipient of fifth cidc vishwakarma award under the category of achievement award for the scientist for the year 2013 he was recipient of distinguished professor award by amravati research academy for the year 2020 and outstanding faculty award for the year 2019 by venus international foundation chennai congratulations professor for the lot of awards and achievements in 2009 he attended as a member of the damage inspection team for the world largest earthquake test on seven story wood building on a 40 by 60 site at miki city japan japan under national science foundation project usa he was the recipient of by scott fellowship in 2008 from department of science and technology under which he worked with professor john van de el department of civil engineering colorado state university usa sir also delivered 190 i am very happy to note this figure <clears throat> 190 invited and guest lectures at various national international forums congratulations professor and also <clears throat> chaired and co-chaired more than 25 sessions in international national conferences he organized more than 50 number of workshops and seminars conferences training programs he has published more than 50 research papers in various international national journals and international conference out of which he received five best paper awards he has guided over more than 30 mtech and uh, btech theses he has got a patent on his credit sir also uh, was uh, recently elected as a national governing council member of bamboo society of india for the 21 23 engineers who are all interested interact the speaker to take the membership he served as a management committee member of indian concrete institute karnataka bangalore center during 2007 to 11 and 2017 to 19 he was the reviewer of journal of structural engineering american society of civil engineering the indian concrete journal international journal of earth science and engineering journal of bamboo and satan journal of and also journal of cleaner materials engineer e investigations and materials today proceedings elsewhere he is the fellow in uh, fellow of institute of engineers association of consulting civil engineer india and life member of indian concrete institute and bamboo society of india iaws isca his research inter- interest includes sustainable building materials self compacting concrete concrete technology cementitious material earthquake engineering and bamboo based and pre fabricated housing i am very much thankful with your rich experience our august gathering gathering and also the nirmiti kendra engineers will benefit this lecture uh, thank you once again uh, and I'll welcome professor jagdish and i request him to take over the session professor jagdish uh, good, yeah good afternoon and uh, uh, uh thank you uh, professor venkatesh babu sir and uh, thank you uh, srinivas kulkarni sir who is the director for the training skill training institute uh, next uh, one minute of hour i am going to discuss about uh, bamboo as a building material uh, where in the last uh, 18 years of my work is on this material <laughs> along with the other materials other similar materials and uh, so my presentation uh, uh, you know includes what is bamboo and uh, how you can construct using bamboo as a building material and wherein uh, the housing system which i work with my earlier organization and also uh, some of the properties as a civil engineer uh, you know uh, you should know about uh, strength and elastic properties and also uh, some of the performance of the elements such as like wall roof and then truss materials and about two story bamboos and then performance studies on the this particular full scale housing system 
and uh, lastly seismic uh, response studies i'm going to uh, present uh, on uh, infant tip so when it comes to the bamboo uh, from indian state forest report there are number of species that are available and uh, the availability of bamboo is around 14 million hectares in india so every year uh, they harvest that means they cut the bamboo and use it for various purposes the quantity of bamboo they cut is around 13 million metric tons uh, in all over india northeastern and uh, west bengal is the major share where in you get you have a lot of bamboo resources when you see the top 10 states in terms of bamboo bearing area uh, madhya pradesh uh, tops the uh, you know the bamboo bearing area uh, along with uh, the other states like arunachal pradesh and uh, karnataka assam chhattisgarh as we have splitted the states uh, northeast states otherwise northeast is having the more bamboo area you can see in this particular picture there are two varieties of bamboo is available one is the clump farming based bamboo and non clump farming based bamboo so most of the bamboo that is available in india is a uh, clump farming that is almost 67% and there are number of species uh, you know which are used for various purposes uh, the major uh, share is dendrocolumna strictus almost 45% and bamboo sarinacea hamilton tulda and so on. i have clearly mentioned that northeast bears most of the uh, you know the bamboo bearing area uh, followed by madhya pradesh maharashtra orissa and other states as i mentioned uh, there are two types of bamboos one is clump and non clump farming these are like we can call it as a monopodial and sympodial bamboo so uh, monopodial is like a single bamboo shoot comes out from rhizome and uh, Uh, sympodial is number of shoots comes out of the rhizome rhizome is a dense uh, uh, root system uh, from there wherein these shoots will come out uh, one very interesting thing is uh, the bamboo comes under grass family and uh, indian forest act they have amended in 2017 that exempts you can grow the bamboo in non forest areas and uh, you can cut uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, permit to transport this for various uses as i mentioned there are like monopodial and sympodial bamboo so if you go to the colombian and uh, some of the other uh, south american countries you have a bamboo that is available is a monopodial bamboo wherein uh, a single shoot will come out where it is very straight and uh, you can see some of the works by simon wales and other architects uh, the species name is gadu ambu festula so it has got a, a, a tensile strength and also it has having a property of double rings in uh, node portions when you compare the energy with other construction materials like concrete steel or wood so bamboo uh, requires very less energy for a production uh, suppose if you take the ratio between the energy per unit stress uh, bamboo requires only 30 units of uh, energy per unit stress where in steel requires 1500 units the per unit stress followed by concrete and wood very important as a civil engineer we should know when you cut the bamboo into two halves there is a hollow portion between two nodes node is a solid disc portion you can see here uh, and uh, between two nodes is a hollow portion one very important thing one should understand is all the fibers that are oriented along the direction of the column column so these fibers are not continuous along the length uh, some of the fibers they bend inside the node portions unless like wood there are no radial fibers in bamboo uh, uh, timber is having uh, you know radial fibers too so that is why uh, individual fibers when you see particularly for the bamboo even though split happens node will arrest the crack propagation and also uh, the species to species the difference is uh, the the number of fibers so some of the species having more number of fibers more fibers more density you require more energy to fracture the materials and uh, when you look into the cross section of the bamboo uh, the more number of fibers are uh, oriented along the uh, wall along the you know outer portion of the bamboo 
So there are number of uses for bamboo, less than 30 days uh, people use, that means we call it as shoots. So the shoots are used for eating. And six to nine months bamboo, um, these bamboo is very tender in nature and you can sliver, sliver it and then this particular uh, slivers can be used for making baskets and other uh, artifacts. And uh, two to three years bamboo, you can either make splits or slivers. And from that, uh, you can make either composite boards or laminates out of this particular age of bamboo. Generally, three to six years bamboo, we use it for construction purpose. So after six years, uh, bamboo gradually loses its strength. Wherein because it is remained there and then uh, insect attack and other things are there. As we all know, bamboo can tolerate high values of deformation. You take the example of the ladder. Once you step in, it bends. Once you, you know, uh, step out of the ladder, it, it comes to, it takes its original position. So typically bamboo uh, tolerates high values of deformation. So the houses you construct using uh, the bamboo are more ductile in nature. So shear parameter is very, very important. Bamboo fails in shear before it fails in tension. So MOR, modulus of rupture, is generally used to calculate the strength. These are some of the typical houses wherein I have visited in the northeastern part of India, wherein some of the houses are uh, you know, the completely mud plastered uh, inside is bamboo is a reinforcement for wall. And uh, some of the houses you can see that these are rough plastered houses. Uh, some are combination of plastered and unplastered because uh, till a certain height, these uh, houses are plastered because to make sure during the flooding it takes care. And also uh, the houses, uh, some of the houses, uh, they can use the bamboo mat board what they do, they sp split the bamboo and then flatten the bamboo. And then these flattened bamboo is weaved into mats and these mats are, uh, you know, used for, uh, you know, making the walls. We call it the prefabricated walls. These are the typical houses you can see in uh, the Northeastern part of India, wherein the bamboo is majorly available. And some of the South American countries like Colombia and all, the rack system and wattle and dab systems are more uh, familiar. This, this is a traditional bamboo construction that is practiced in South American countries, wherein these type of houses are, are uh, very well uh, proven to be earthquake resistant, wherein here they have a frame system, either with the timber, uh, timber frame, between timber frame, uh, they, uh, you know, they place the downstrip grid, and then uh, plastered using either mud or any other mortar. But in India, uh, we, uh, common people consider still bamboo structures are temporary and unreliable. There are a lot of reasons, uh, but I just would like to mention, um, you know, few reasons or three, four reasons, major reasons. One is uh, people feel uh, bamboo has its uh, limited natural durability. And it is very difficult to join, they, they feel it very difficult to join one member to another member or the column to beam or within beam, we have to make the beam, uh, you know, there is a difficulty in joining. And the lack of structural design data uh, 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 till 2005, uh, you know, uh, not much documented, even though a lot of studies have been done. And it is very interesting to note that uh, till 2005, bamboo has not been included in our, uh, our own National Building Code of India. So first time in uh, 2005, uh, they've included bamboo as one of the building material uh, and uh, they've given a lot of information about the bamboo in uh, part six that we talk about structural design. So in section three earlier, they used to talk about only timber. So section three has been divided into 3A and 3B. 3B talks about uh, bamboo. And other, uh, uh, you know, the points have been uh, thoroughly addressed, wherein the limited natural durability has been improved by giving the suitable treatment for the bamboo. And also a lot of joinery methods have been come up and a lot of testing has been carried out by various organizations. And uh, 
uh, the data which uh, uh, structural properties have been tested has been given in the National Building Code of India. You can see uh, the compressive strength and modulus of elasticity and modulus of rupture, a lot of values for various species. It has been documented in National Building Code of India. So not only bamboo using alone as a building material, a bamboo can be converted uh, into composites uh, wherein uh, uh, the idea to wherein I have worked as a scientist for almost 11 years, uh, they've contributed a lot of, uh, uh, you know, um, work on um, uh, developing uh, composites uh, using bamboo. So uh, typically uh, bamboo uh, mats are weaved uh, manually and then these mats are, uh, you know, weaved into two typical patterns, either rectangular or hidden bone, uh, based on the studies conducted by Pretty. It is very interesting to know that uh, the heading bone pattern gives uh, very good strength. So after dipping the mats into resin, they take it out and dry it. And then uh, if you, uh, you know, um, place these number of mats into a hot press, uh, and apply temperature and pressure. So, if the dye of the uh, 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 you know uh, if the dye of the hot press is uh, flat, you get a flat board. And if the dye of the hot plate is corrugated in shape, you get a bamboo uh, corrugated sheets. And very interesting case study. One should uh, know that uh, bamboo has been used for a longer time. Very interesting case study by one Mr. Bipul Kumar Das from Northeast, wherein uh, he has used uh, bamboo strips uh, for arch, uh, arch material, wherein uh, for a RCC beam, between RCC beams, uh, he has weaved these bamboo strips into arch form and then plastered uh, and then made the, uh, you know, bamboo reinforced uh, uh, arch roof. After 24 years, uh, he wanted to uh, dismantle the roof. Before dismantling the roof, he has uh, taken out the photographs wherein uh, he chipped out the uh, cement mortar. And then after 25 years, you can see 1.8 meter span of uh, bamboo strip arch wherein it can able to hold, uh, you know, the, the person. Uh, what I mean to say is, uh, without supporting the cement motor, uh, still the arch, bamboo strip arch, is able to take a person's load after 25 years of its service. Uh, this is very interesting uh, uh, for uh, civil engineers and architects, wherein if you use the bamboo as a right uh, material, you can uh, build wonderful structures. Based on my experience in India, it is very uh, uh, important to note this point because uh, selection and grading uh, takes, if you, if you take uh, the entire uh, bamboo construction as uh, I think somebody is, yeah. So uh, the percentage of involvement one should do for bamboo construction is as we, uh, you know, get a sympodial bamboo, you need to select the right bamboo and grade the bamboo accordingly. And then uh, you have to treat the bamboo. So in my view, 70% of your effort should go in selecting the right bamboo and grade it for various purposes and then treat this bamboo properly. So once you have a properly graded, treated bamboo, uh, you can uh, carry out any kind of construction. In, uh, in, in the construction, again, 10% effort, you should go in uh, construction technology. I mean to say the joinery and other, uh, uh, other uh, area you have to focus. Coming to uh, one of the housing system developed by Ipriti, where I have worked uh, previously. So I will explain this housing system, wherein the freshly cut bamboo contains a lot of moisture. So almost uh, 60 to 70 percent of the moisture. So when you uh, see the moisture content versus uh, crushing stress, that means all the strength. So the more the moisture, uh, you have the less the strength. So 
you have to season the bamboo to a moisture uh, less than 20% wherein you get a required strength uh, uh, for the bamboo. So the main thing is when you freshly cut the bamboo, you make sure you season it to 20% and then use it for uh, your construction purpose. For various uh, uh, elements, uh, you have to use a different thickness and uh, different diameter of the bamboo. Typically, 75 to 100 mm, that is 3 inch to 4 inch diameter bamboo, we take it. And a minimum of uh, 10 mm wall thickness we consider uh, for either columns, beams, or trusses. So typically, the bamboo is uh, uh, in a tapered nature from uh, bottom to top when you cut at the bottom the bottom having more dia and when it goes to top portion of the bamboo it, it is it uh, decreases so it tapers so uh, you have to make sure that the 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 minimum dia side uh, you should have a minimum 10 mm uh, wall thickness wall thickness is nothing but uh, uh, outside dia minus inside dia inner dia and uh, bamboo thin bamboo uh, you use it for uh, uh, thin wall bamboo you use it for the purlin purposes uh, for purlins here uh, you require only two inch to uh, three inch uh, bamboo and internodal distance is less it is preferable and also the outside cover of the bamboo that smooth cover what we call uh, is a silica layer you should not peel it off it protects the bamboo from external uh, weathering so when you are doing grading of the bamboo, you make sure that there should not be any sweetness in the bamboo and there should not be any crookedness. You better select the bamboo, which is as tight as bulb. Treatment is very important part of the bamboo, preservative treatment. Uh, a number of methods, number of chemicals nowadays people are using to treat the bamboo. Uh, I'll explain you two typical chemicals what they use for uh, uh, this uh, treatment. So one is the internodal injection method, uh, wherein internodal injection method between two nodes, you make a drill and then make a 6M dye hole, and then you inject a crystal oil of 25 to uh, 30 ml, and then close it using the wax and then roll it such that the internal portion of the bamboo gets uh, uh, treated uh, using the creosotoil. Creosotoil is a coal tar derivative and uh, why we are uh, making it uh, treated inside portion. Inside portion, there is a lot of starch material, starch is a food for insects. So next is a uh, hot and cold treatment. So whenever you are using the bamboo columns, some of the, the, the bottom portion of the column goes below the ground level where it, um, you take a drum, steel drum, and then pour the crystal oil, and then place all the columns which you are going to place all the bamboos which you are going to use it as a column, and then uh, heat uh, the crystal oil for an hour, and then uh, uh, cool it for next uh, 24 hours, uh, and then you take out the bamboo and then use it for uh, uh, your uh, purpose. So this is nothing but you're doing both uh, uh, heating and cooling um, one hour and then 24 hours at the same time. That's why we call it as a hot and cold treat treatment. What happens if you don't treat it? There is a graveyard text wherein uh, typically you take a two feet uh, bamboo and then uh, half of the, so one feet bamboo, it goes below the insect. Mode. I think I request all the participants. Hey, Alre. Raichur. Raichur. So just mute it. Nirmiti Kendra, Raichur. Raichur, Nirmiti Kendra. Mute modern. I request all the participants to mute yourself. Okay. Oh, thank you. So, so uh, you know, if you uh, treat the, once you treat it, uh, to check whether, you know, the bamboo got treated or not, um, you can uh, test it using the uh, graveyard test, wherein, as I told, two feet bamboo, take it half, you bury it under the insect mound. And then uh, you check uh, the treated and untreated portions uh, every now and then, like a, in a month, how the, the bamboo is uh, performing or after three months, six months, and one year. So typically the 
treated bamboo will be fine and then untreated bamboo slowly the insects will eat it you can see the perished bamboo next is the dip diffusion method dip diffusion method is a uh, you know very simple method wherein you use the boric borax solution so for uh, uh, in a house we usually play the carom board we use the boric powder so we use the boric powder for two purposes the the one purpose is uh, for smoothness of board that is what everyone will say but uh, the second purpose is the carom board is made up of wood veneer sheet if you don't play and if you keep it aside uh, for some times so you might have observed a small small holes and with the powder so the insect attack is there so what does that mean you know if you keep on playing and if you are putting the boric powder and playing so this boric powder is having a uh, resistance to these uh, small insects and other things so the, the same boric powder we use it in treating the bamboo in dip diffusion method so in this Now, suppose if you take a hundred liters of water, so one percent of boric acid, that is like one kg of boric acid and borax is one and a half kg. You uh, put it in water and uh, mix it and make a solution, and uh, all the bamboo which you would like to treat uh, the, the perlins and uh, strips and other uh, material, you dip it for you submerge for two days and then take it out and allow them to dry. and then use it for uh, the purpose construction purpose so this is another way of doing the uh, you know the treatment that is dip diffusion method and there is another uh, method that is a, a brochery method wherein i have not uh, included here in brochery method uh, with the pressure uh, the creosotol is pumped from one side creosotol or ccb so there are any chemical you pump it from one side and then through capillary action it uh, slowly uh, goes along the length of the bamboo and comes from the other side wherein the entire bamboo gets treated with the brochery process so treatment uh, takes part almost 30% of your effort so this is very important to uh, you know the increase its durability so these are the various methods of the treatment so when it comes to the foundation where is other other construction uh, aspects so the typically if you take the 8 feet by 8 feet uh, bamboo house it weighs around 2.7 tons 2700 kg when we tested a typical house it, you know we actually calculated and weight so the the total weight of the bamboo house comes out to be very less so you don't require a you know uh, deeper foundations in this case so typically the foundation depth is uh, uh, about 1 uh, uh, to 1 and a half feet uh, or uh, maximum 2 feet so wherever columns are coming um, you go for a concrete footing of 1 foot by 1 foot uh, and the other places you raise the stone masonry uh, in a, uh, in a wall and between the columns uh, you place the strip grid and chicken mesh and then you plaster it you can see the the column is inserted into you know concrete footing to have a better anchorage between the column bamboo column and then the the foundation so small steel rods are inserted uh, in orthogonal directions where it gives a better anchorage uh, you know uh, between the foundation and then bamboo column and uh, when it comes to the 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 wall portion uh, wherein uh, uh, once you place the columns the typically the column uh, spacing is between 4 feet to 6 feet and um, between the columns you place the bamboo strip grid the strip grid size is uh, 6 inch by 6 inch and then these are tied to the columns using the small steel rods you can see here and then chicken mesh is tied to the strip grid and then one coat of plastering is done and then wait for one or two days to dry and then final coat of plastering is done so that's how your uh, uh, columns and then walls are ready so trusses bamboo trusses are placed over the columns and then over the trusses you place the perlins for over the perlins you place the uh, you know corrugated sheet and then your roof is your house is your house gets ready as i mentioned joinery is very very important uh, to get a uh, to achieve the structural continuity in the elements so most of the forces either wind force 
forces or any other earthquake forces, if it has to be transmitted according to a safe and prescribed manner, manner, and also the deformation should be kept under control. So you have to make sure the proper joinery is placed. Traditionally, we have a lashing tying and cane bamboo strips are used uh, for uh, traditional joinery. Connect the various bamboos. You have a lot of uh, traditional joiner methods such as you know lapping and butt joints, scarf, debate joint, and fish mouth joints, and using the natural materials as a joinery uh, uh, members. But uh, yeah, one more thing very important uh, uh, in terms of joinery when you are doing, we make sure that. Uh, 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 you, uh, you know, crushing of open ends are not there. And uh, also uh, you use the less nails and pegs and uh, uh, you, you connect the, the various uh, elements properly. But the problem with the traditional joinery or the natural materials is due to the weather changes, uh, uh, due to winter and then summer, these joinery get loosened up and the forces are greater wherein the bamboo shrinks. So joinery gets loosened up and then elements get loosened up and the house will become instable. So wherein um, you can use the gusset plate and metal bolt system wherein we use it for the uh, steel trusses. So the similar method we can use it here by placing the gusset plate, uh, either plywood or bamboo mat composite board and the nut and bolt, and you can connect the, the you know, various uh, bamboo materials. So when compared with the natural uh, joinery methods, uh, gusset plate and nut and bolt system has improved stiffness and strength uh, 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 you know, over a period of time. So once again, I'll just show you the entire uh, different stages of the, the construction. The first bay, is only the bamboo columns connected with wooden top plate. Second bay is uh, with a, a small steel rods on all the four sides. Third bay is bamboo strip grid is tied to uh, the uh, inner bay. And then the fourth bay, you can see chicken mesh is tied to the uh, bamboo strip grid. A fifth one is one coat of plastic done. Fifth, uh, sixth one is uh, second coat and then final, final finish. You can see the trusses are uh, connected using the gusset plate and nut and bolt system. And then these are connected to the wall plate and the load, the roof load is getting transported to the column. And then over the columns, you have a house split bamboo as a purlin. And then over the purlin, you have the corrugated sheet, uh, you know, tied to the purlins. That's how the, the various stages of construction you can see in one picture. When it comes to the treatment, one has to note that uh, a, the columns are treated using, uh, you know, internode injection or brochure process and also hot and cold treatment. Why? Because these columns are exposed to the outside weather whenever rain comes, even though rain comes and uh, it is uh, exposed to the water, uh, the creosote oil doesn't uh, leach out. When it comes to the strips and then the purlins, the covered portions only be treated using the dip diffusion method. So, only exposed portions we treat it using the internodal injection or brochure process. So because dip diffusion process, if you use the boric barak solution, you cannot use it for columns because it has a leaching out property. So when the columns are treated using dip diffusion and then you use it as a column and if it is exposed to the rain, the chemical leaches out uh, along with the rain water. So it is very. You make sure that the only the internal portions of the bamboo are used uh, using the dip diffusion treatment. Dip diffusion is boric barak solution. So this is the next stage. You can see the you know over the purlins uh, you place the bamboo uh, sheets or whatever you know the, the corrugated sheets and J bolt, metal bolt, washer, and then this is the finish. These are some of the houses uh, where in uh, my old office, pretty, you can see that, uh, you know, the, the uh, security cabins and the other demonstration houses, they, these, were made, they, these are still there and intact. So as a civil engineer, uh, we should know the properties of the bamboo. As a part of my thesis, I have tested rigorously one particular species that is bambusa bambus, which is most abundantly available in uh, Karnataka. So I have carried out various tests such as compression, flexure, shear, and the free, free vibration. Even the full-scale tests on uh, columns are conducted. 
So when we carried the compression test, if you take the bamboo, typically you have the node and the hollow portion. So what I did, three typical case studies I have taken out of the 300 mm length. One is completely a hollow bamboo. Uh, one is the node in between, uh, node is in the middle, and then a node on either side of the bamboo. So these are the three case studies I've taken and then did the compression test uh, applying the load. So we've calculated uh, the using the DEMAC gauge, we calculated the deformation also. So uh, change in dimension to original dimension, we get the strain and then load by area, area is pi by four, D1 square minus D2 square because it's a circular. So only the contact area is the wall thickness. So load by area, you get the stress. When we plotted the stress versus strain, you get the modulus of elasticity. So you could see that the compressor strength in the hollow and the node in the middle and then the node on either side. You, the results are uh, given here and the, even the modulus of elasticity values also. So what does it, what inference we can see here is, uh, you should create a, uh, a you know more surface area on either uh, end of the column, either side of the column. So typically, when you are making the column on either side, uh, you make it solid. Uh, either you can insert a wooden peg and cut it so that the entire portion, the surface area, becomes full. That means you cannot keep it hollow uh, on either side of the column when you are uh, either side of the bamboo when you are using it as a column. Even the short bamboo specimens of 180 to 200 mm height, we have tested. As I mentioned, shear test is very, very important because uh, bamboo fails in shear before it fails in um, uh, tension. Uh, and also, when you connect different elements uh, in the truss or different elements, uh, the most of the time you connect the uh, various members using nut and bolt and gusset plate. So when forces, external forces are applied or transmitted, most of the time shear will happen between the bamboo and gusset plate and nut and bolt. So shear is very, very important parameter. We have uh, designed uh, some kind of uh, a test method where we have made a split and then we have inserted a uh, metal plate and then we tested the shear uh, uh, strength of the bamboo. You can see uh, the average is coming around 7.7 .7 and the range is between 4 to 11. And, uh, it, it all depends on the, uh, the, the wall thickness of the bamboo too. We can also, uh, you know, uh, find out the uh, modulus of uh, elasticity using a, a simple uh, free vibration test. Uh, this similar uh, procedure has been adopted for mass Indian planes and concrete specimens. Wherein here, what you do is, um, you create a fixity on one side, and then uh, you tap the other side of the bamboo, and then you fix the accelerometers and you, using accelerometer, you uh, measure the vibrations, accelerations, and from that uh, you can, uh, you know, find the, uh, you know, the modulus of uh, elasticity, the combined modulus you can find it. So anyway, we have already tested in compression module uh, using the compressive strength so that you can get the tension modulus. So this is a very interesting test one can carry out to find out the combined modulus of the bamboo. Even the flexor, we can also we have also carried out the flexural test. The typical values you can see, uh, you know what we got. Full scale tests also carried out for long columns, uh, wherein uh, seven feet or eight feet bamboo we have tested. One is single, and even the double built column also we have carried out at uh, BMS College of Engineering. Uh, this is this test is carried out carried out in the year 2007, wherein uh, with the loading frame, we carried out like how much load it will take. Like, um, so these are, these are the values. Typically, a, a seven feet bamboo of uh, four inch dia with a wall thickness of uh, uh, 12 to 15 mm can take a load of uh, half a ton, 500 kgs uh, with a minimal deflection. This is what, you know, what we observed. And also the, the tracks of the road, you can see the typical thing. And also we are uh, trying to understand what happens uh, with the height. Because we have tested 180 mm, 300 mm, we tested. That means one feet, and we also tested seven feet height. What happens uh, uh, when we test, when, when the height difference is there 1.25 meters and then 1.5 meters also we have tested. These are the values. So 
So when we plotted the graph between stress versus slenderness ratio of column stress field, so initially we have tested the small specimens of one feet height and then seven feet height long columns, seven feet, sorry, eight feet height long columns, and then in between also. So when we plot the Euler's curve, you know, it, it falls that 1.25 and 1.5 meter it falls within the Euler's curve. Tensile test on bamboo strips also carried out uh, uh, wherein uh, the strips were taken and then pulled on either side. The, the bundle of fibers are pulled on either side. So this is what the tensile stand, what we got is around 75 MP. And then the, this is the model SFLS CD, what we got. So here you can see uh, the, the strength, the tensile strength is much, much higher uh, when compared to the other building materials. So this is the property people say like, you know, uh, bamboo is comparable with steel. That means in terms of uh, tensile property, they say. So having tested the individual properties of the bamboo, you know, I thought of working on the various wall elements, like wall, uh, various wall and other, uh, you know, house elements like trusses and then composite slab and so on. So as I already explained the pretty Trada bamboo based walling system, wherein the bamboo columns, strip grid, and chicken mesh, and then plastered on either side. So this wall has been tested uh, for the shock resistance and impact, and even the racking uh, resistance test also calculated. So uh, initially, it's only four feet between the two columns. We thought of testing between two columns, how much span you can give. So basically, uh, so we tried five feet, six feet, and then seven feet also. So beyond the six feet, what happens? There is a problem with the lateral stability between the two columns. So up to six feet, this wall is working fine in terms of various tests. And particularly uh, cement mortar, whatever we've used uh, is like one is to three can be replaced, a part of uh, cement can be replaced using any of the cementitious material like uh, fly ash or GGBS. So one third of uh, you know cement has been replaced uh, using the GGBS and fly ash. And when we conducted the tests on wall, like shock resistance, soft and light body, hard body impact, racking test, there was no damage that was observed with a minimum amount of deflection, particularly for the racking test. So fire is uh, one of the major uh, concern uh, for the elements, uh, particularly the, the roofing uh, portion of the uh, bamboo. Suppose if you're using a bamboo mat curvature, uh, if you put on the fire and on the roofing sheet, uh, it won't catch the fire, but uh, it, it will blacken the surface. Uh, this is what we observed. So one very important thing is the, the, the exposed fibers should be properly treated. Uh, so these fibers, so even with the column also, so uh, when it uh, uh, exposed to the file, so that particular column portion, it will uh, blacken the surface, but uh, you know, the, the, the it won't catch the fire. So catching a fire, when it happens, if the fibers are exposed and the fibers are caught in fire, uh, the exposed fibers. So that is why the edge portion of the fibers of the bamboo or corrugated sheet or any composite has to be given a fire retardant treatment or you have to protect it properly. This is what uh, my, uh, you know, the review. When it comes to the trusses, you can make trusses. Uh, typically, the truss making, we do it using the three inch to four inch uh, dia bamboo. And then we use a six mm bamboo mat board as a gusset plate. If you don't uh, get the bamboo mat board, you can use the uh, marine grade plywood. And uh, eight to 10 mm dia bolts are used for connecting uh, these uh, elements. So we have carried out the testing for 10 feet truss and 14 feet and 18 feet truss. Making a truss is very simple. You have to, uh, you know, uh, draw a, uh, you know, uh, uh, full-scale layout, uh, truss layout on uh, with a piece of chalk, and then uh, this truss has to be, you know, uh, you know, you have to place all the bamboo members, and then um, these bamboo members are uh, connected uh, with the shape and then cut those wherever you know these bamboos are connected and then uh, the plate is provided on either side and nut and bolt is fixed to it and this is a typical primary school building uh, uh, it uh, used uh, 16 feet bamboo trusses 
uh, with eight feet distance. The cost of the these uh, building uh, come out half the cost of the steel trusses when they were used. So we have tested the uh, you know the up to the design load and also two and a half times more than the design load of these trusses, these ten and uh, fourteen and then eighteen feet. You can see it is taking two and a half times the design load with a minimum uh, deflection of uh, 30, 30, 33 mm. So, so once we carried out these tests, we have given the test result to the, the, the industry. And some of the industrial sheds have been uh, replaced using uh, bamboo trusses in place of steel trusses. You can see the, uh, you know, a lot of steel has been saved in this case. Even the composite deck slab has been tested, wherein uh, the, the deflection, maximum deflection is around 8 mm uh, for a load of, uh, you know, the, the 9807 newtons we have applied, uh, almost like tender. And then deflection is with the limits. So these are the composite slab. This is a two-story house, which was uh, there in Egypt. This is one more house. Uh, you can see this is, a, uh, you know, th these are the stages in the uh, two-story house. So before uh, doing the two-story house, we tested various elements, as I mentioned, composite slab and then floor deck and even the uh, composite beam also we have tested. So some of the construction aspects, as I've already mentioned, when you're, you know, using the bamboo the column on both the sides, either side of the column, you have to fill it uh, using the wood or mortar to have a better bearing capacity and wherever required a small amount of steel connections like L angles and Z angles has to be used to connect the columns to beams. This is a typical uh, you know landing beam, staircase beam, first floor staircase beam. You can see there is a column coming from the ground floor, there is a beam, there is a landing beam, there is a first floor beam. So all are connected using the Z angle and the landing. Even the box windows also constructed at various places uh, using this similar bamboo grid wall technology you can see in the uh, you know, picture. So the inside portion of the house, this is one more view of the inside portion of the two story. That time in around 2007, uh, it costed around 1000 uh, square feet, uh, it costed 500 flags. It's 550 rupees per square feet. That time it was around, RCC was around 1100 rupees per square feet. Almost half the cost of the RCC house when we uh, uh, did using bamboo as a building material. This is one more house uh, constructed by one of our senior scientists. You can see this is a, a typical house. This is a finished ground floor. So it's the same technology. This is a kitchen bathroom inside presses, balcony portion. This is a completed building, one thing. This is the other view. So if you have a good architectural, uh, you know, the view, you can, you can use this material uh, properly and then you can make uh, the two-story house. So now I'm coming to the performance studies on uh, various uh, bamboo-based uh, housing systems. I'm coming to the performance studies. So before getting into the bamboo, um, there are like houses, traditional houses, uh, using uh, some part of the bamboo as some portion of the material is a bamboo. So this is called Ikra type of housing system, more prevalent in uh, Sikkim and other places, wherein this typical housing system up to one meter above plinth, they use a stone masonry wall. Above that, they have a wooden frames wherein woven bamboo mat is plastered with cement or mud mortar. Uh, the, the walls and roofs, they use a weed called ikra. It's similar to, you know, it's like cane. Um, these houses uh, during the Sikkim earthquake in 2011 and then 2006 earthquake, um, which stood very well, uh, even though uh, a little amount of falling of debris happened, but no injury was caused. But in but uh, construction of higher stories, it may not be suitable, this ikra type of housing system. This is, these are all barrack variants. You will see in 16 inch by 6 inch grid. And one can go for uh, any kind of uh, framing system. And then in between, you have a, a, a grid. Uh, uh, and also, uh, you have a you know uh, a wooden uh, bracing and timber basic. Uh, a typical, uh, you know, uh, variants. These are all the, some of the bamboo barrack buildings uh, you can see in the uh, uh, you know, South American countries and other countries, wherein uh, these buildings are, uh, you know, very well uh, prevailing in uh, uh, 
uh, South American countries. These are all bamboo uh, based barrack buildings. So even these uh, buildings, like uh, these houses, are damaged uh, during uh, 86 San Salvador earthquake and uh, uh, El Salvador earthquakes. The reasons are many because uh, in the footing portion or the foundation portion, they've used the wood and wooden uh, foundation wherein it has got rotten. Some connections are not proper and all. So the, here comes the role of the universities wherein uh, some of the universities like in University of uh, uh, and is Costa Rica and other universities, they have uh, done uh, cyclic load tests on these uh, structural barrack walling system. And then they have come out with a, uh, you know, a optimized or an improved version of these barrack systems. And uh, later this improved uh, walling system has been implemented in many of the colonies in uh, these uh, 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 countries. And um, later earthquakes, uh, later earthquakes, uh, later earthquakes, uh, these uh, uh, barracks, uh, houses, uh, proved to be uh, earthquake resistant. And even in April-Tree Tata housing system, you know, we have carried out the cyclic loading experiments, you can see. So this is a part of my uh, thesis. I've carried out the work at the Colorado State University wherein uh, we've used bamboo uh, to make uh, two different walls. One is a... Uh, wall without window and one is the wall with window. So both the walls we carried out the cyclic loading tests, uh, you know, wherein a 90 kilonewton actuator was used, uh, uh, you know, wherein um, we've carried out the test for uh, these two, uh, you know, walls. Uh, the middle bamboo uh, got, uh, you know, uh, crushed because uh, here, what we used is a uh, thin-walled uh, uh, bamboo. Uh, so we've carried out this cyclic load test. This was carried out in uh, Colorado State University yes, as part of my fellowship program. So a lot of uh, insights uh, or a lot of inferences we have drawn from these uh, testing. Uh, then we understood they should have a minimum wall thickness for the columns also. And also the crack progress we observed. And we numerically... Uh, modeled uh, the the values of these uh, uh, data uh, into a full scale house of uh, eight feet by eight feet, uh, wherein um, when we gave the input in some of the software and numerically modeled the house using the wall uh, values, uh, the and gave the earthquake uh, input, and in most of the cases, even the bush earthquake or the mean uh, uh, earthquakes of twenty shallow earthquakes of US. Uh, in all the cases, uh, the response was good and uh, with the low drift levels and uh, uh, even though seismic uh, intensities were exceeding the design levels. So these buildings, that means uh, with a walling test, cyclic loading test and numerically model the full scale house, uh, you know, we've got a, a very good performance of these houses. And uh, university, at University of Andes, Columbia, they've tested the shake table test on uh, a typical two story house. The, the inside portion of the house. So as a part of my thesis, I have carried out, uh, you know, shock table test uh, uh, at, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, shock table test at, uh, 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 shock table test at, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, IAC, uh, sorry, uh, at our institute, wherein, uh, um, you know, you can see the difference. Uh, uh, you can see the difference. Uh, you can see the difference uh, between the shock table and uh, shake table, uh, wherein uh, shake table uh, is a three-dimensional uh, uh, movement, and you can, you can actually simulate earthquake ground motion in a three-dimensional way. And then uh, shock table is, can be uh, simulated in only unidirectional. And uh, so uh, why, uh, you know, go for a shock table? I'll give reason. So this is a typical, what you've seen in the picture is the world's largest shake table, uh, wherein uh, this is in Japan. This is a seven-story wood building. Uh, you know, uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, I was part of uh, this uh, 
testing program. So you can see uh, myself uh, there, uh, you know, we are carrying out uh, damage inspection for after the test. So uh, using a shape table, uh, this uh, typical tree trada house has been tested at CPRI Bangalore, uh, wherein uh, they be in the zone four and zone five uh, simulation for 30 seconds. And the zone five earthquake input has been given for five times to check the fatigue of the this particular house. Even the Kobe earthquake also has been tested and the structure did not exhibit any distress or crack. So uh, by the end of the program, we could not able to find uh, any of the cracks or anything. We thought of checking what is the, the you know crack progress and what is the damage uh, intensity of this particular house. Uh, to test again and again, number of models, uh, only the cost constraint, you need a sophisticated facility. Even after testing this model, we could not able to find out the vulnerability. So that is why we thought of going for a shock table test. So before going, uh, go going to the test, we uh, understood that the shock table test has been very well proven uh, by testing uh, various uh, masonry, reinforced masonry models, unreinforced models at various places like uh, IIT Roorkee and then Nirma University campus and Dava. So this shock table has been very well proven and uh, my guide is involved, uh, Professor K, uh, uh, Professor uh, Strabunal from BMS College of Engineering and his guide is also involved in developing this uh, test and then tested various buildings at various places. So uh, to uh, test this particular house, we did construct the shop table at uh, uh, my old office at the Ipriti campus, wherein uh, it is very important uh, here, the entire, uh, you know, the table, uh, you have to design such that the natural frequency of the table should be much, much higher than the natural frequency of the bamboo house. So in, in our case, uh, the frequency of the house is around, uh, uh, 13 hertz, and then the uh, the natural frequency of the table what we have designed is around 130 hertz. It's almost like uh, you know 10 times more the, the you know the, the the house frequency, and also the the pendulum uh, uh, you know the pendulum uh, uh, weight uh, should be one tenth of the uh, uh, you know the, the the one tenth of the weight of the building, and uh, so when we uh, you know, construct the building on the table and then the pendulum will hit uh, the table and the vibrations are created. And then we observe the, uh, we record the you know, vibrations and the crack progress of the building. So this is the first model we constructed on the shop table. You can see the table and then you can see the pendulum. So pendulum, uh, we impart the shocks on the table with various angles. Like if you go for five degrees, there's one shock the 10 degrees, the more impact, 15 more, 30, 35, 40, 45. This is the first how first model. You can see we've given number of shocks like with a 20 degrees, 25, 30, 35, and 40. Almost we have given a 15 shocks. After giving 15 shocks, you can observe the uh, 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 minute uh, uh, hairline cracks that were observed in the in the first model. Okay, but there was a no major structural damage that was noticed. Then we built the second model, and then uh, we've given almost uh, 50 shocks, which is almost uh, you know the, the five times more than that of the first model. And uh, you can see the, the the cumulative impact in it also. In the first case, we've given uh, only 14,000 uh, you know, newton meter of impact, and this is almost like five times more the impact we've given on this particular building. So you can see a typical video of, uh, this is a shock number 21 of uh, 45 degree angle. Uh, the pendulum is released and uh, you know, the, it hits the table and then by which the crack uh, gets progressed. Uh, these are the typical crack patterns observed for wall A and wall B. You can see here, shock number 22, 30, 42. So the cracks are getting wide open, uh, you know, uh, the, the, due to number of shocks. You can see the wall B also. You can see there is a, uh, you know, uh, uh, widening of these cracks. This is a wall C. This is a front portion. Uh, this is at a shock number 22, 30, you can see, and then 42. So 
this is like 22, 30, and then 42. These are the cracks, uh, crack progress you can observe in all the four sides of the you know, building. This is the last shock we gave, that is the shock number 50, which are 55 degrees. You can observe the, the corner of the building. So here, uh, you know, the bottom uh, connections of the uh, building to the table, the, the, the nut and bolt got sheared off, and then there was a clear twist that happened. So then we stopped the testing. Uh, in a real case, there was no major debris falling uh, from the house, and there was no major damage you can observe here. This is like almost uh, 50 shots using more intensity. You can observe the twisting of the house model. It happened. This is outside view of the building. These are the final uh, crack pattern of the wall at of impact number 50. You can and see the cracks. So uh, typically, even after uh, uh, you know testing two models and a shock table, it is uh, you know uh, seismically resistant. Uh, I can say this house. When it comes to the embodied energy values of different houses, we have all, uh, also calculated energy values of uh, different houses, wherein you know, uh, the, the pretty Trada house and the steel prefabricated house using the bamboo mat composites. So when it comes to the embodied energy, the RCC house is much, much higher when compared to the bamboo based houses. Even the cost is also, I mentioned how the cost of the RCC house. And also bamboo mat corrugated sheet, you give the coating over the roofing material wherein the white colored or the green colored coating. So paint material always absorb more heat when compared to the, you know, light color, you know, the, when compared to the material like brush bond. So there is a difference between a, a brush bond material and then paint material, synthetic material. Synthetic material absorbs more heat when compared to the, you know, powder coated material. This is what we, we also observe, even though the color is white. So bamboo can also use this reinforcement for particularly slabs. You can see here, uh, here we've used uh, the slab portion. Uh, we've used the bamboo as a reinforcement in place of the steel. So very interesting test we have carried out. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, as a part of uh, research. Uh, the college students have done this work. Very interesting work. A park bench has been uh, uh, a pre-cast park bench. It's a bamboo reinforcement using self-compacting concrete. It's been tested, uh, uh, you know, you can see the deflections and so on. This is uh, one of the recent uh, project I was involved. This is a Goa project wherein bamboo restaurant has been built uh, uh, near the seashore. This is the, you know, bamboo restaurant. I was part of this uh, uh, work. So this is a team, uh, you know, the, 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 the person who is uh, uh, taking up the work and then architect and then the, the, the site engineer out there. I was mostly, uh, you know, involved in, you know, the, the construction detailing and then the structural stability of this particular, uh, you know, bamboo house. Some of the pics of this uh, bamboo restaurant uh, during the construction, you can see. This is a typical uh, bare view of the, the, the bamboo restaurant uh, in Goa. So I've come to the conclusion of uh, my topic, uh, development of bamboo structures using bamboo building material. It depends on, one is the availability of this material and also you need to uh, have a eco-friendly preservatives. It is very important to have the design information like standards and codes. Now National Building Code of India 2016, if you go through, you get a lot of information about the design and then the, uh, you know, some of the properties of various pieces of the bamboo. Uh, and all. And you also need to have a trained manpower who can understand the bamboo as a building material and participation of NGOs like Nirmit Kendras are uh, very, very uh, uh, important uh, for encouraging wide use of bamboo. You can see from shock table studies, it is evident that uh, the bamboo horses uh, can able to resist to moderate to major levels of dynamic forces with a minimal damage. So I can say bamboo is a green gold. These are some of my publications. Uh, you can just uh, type it in. Uh, 
these are some of the references thank you you can google it uh, you can get some information this is my email id and mobile number thank you uh, if you have any doubts i am thank you very much professor dr jagdish you have presented a very it is highly informative and excellent presentation i think you did a 360 degree research on bam goes any material as a building material even first uh, one story two story even a dynamic behavior uh, is there any scope to do further research in this area just i want to ask one question yes sir uh, uh, yeah uh, definitely because very less work has been carried out and we have a number of species and also okay. this uh, material can be used and this material can be you know experimented for uh, you know various elements uh, in place of uh, other building materials like energy intensive building materials and particularly very important thing wherever the bamboo is available we have to do this we cannot okay. bring uh, like 300 400 transportation cost will add an uh, yeah. additional cost sometimes transportation cost is much much higher than material cost yeah. so that is why it is better to you know uh, use this material wherever it is available in and around uh, especially the western gods and nirmiti kendra engineers i request to see you can take uh, one of the thread from this presentation today say actually wherever the cost effective buildings are required you just think of this material or any information any technology transfer is required or uh, dr jagdish is available the engineers can contact i will share his uh, number also I uh, will help you in uh, putting up of such structures. He has rightly mentioned that bamboo material should be available. Then only the cost of the structure is less. Therefore, uh, many are there in Mangalore or other sites. I think available, sir, in bamboo in Mangalore site. Yes, sir, available. Yeah. Only thing is, you have to select uh, what is the uh, species he has mentioned. That is also very important. Uh, thank you for your time on all these things. Now I request participants. Any questions are there? Yes, sir, Surendra Patil, you can ask question. I request the participants to introduce yourself. Then ask the questions. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, please go ahead. We are. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Surendra Patil. I am uh, working as assistant engineer, Kashutek Nirmiti Kendra, Raichur, Raichur district. Hello. What is your question? Go ahead. Go ahead. We are able to hear. Go ahead. Yes, sir. It was a wonderful session, sir. i just enjoyed it because it is my most uh, uh, favorite subject bamboo right at present uh, i am uh, doing a lot of uh, i am collecting lot of information regarding bamboo corrugated sheet and i have some samples also from the northeast i have a lot of friends collect yeah, are you involved in yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry there was some interruption yeah yeah please, hello please. please go ahead please repeat please repeat hello you can repeat the question sir I, there was some uh, you know okay, internet okay, glitch sir. was there you can ask no, the question can... so no sir I, i i don't have any question i just have to tell one one information yeah, regarding uh, indian forest amendment act 2017 hello ha huh, please go ahead we are able to hear yes sir yes sir i i only that bamboo splits uh, one question is bamboo splits uh, is it treated sir for using in a, a cc roads cement concrete roads and roof slabs yeah bamboo it is treated you can yes yes you can Because, you can treat uh, 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 it is exposed from inside and outside also sir both side correct correct you can you can use the dip diffusion treatment no problem once it gets hardened uh, ah, you know there won't be any corrosion that happens so that's why it is we we usually treat using the boric borax solution that is dip diffusion method what i have explained to you Yes, yes, sir. Yes, in the in the tank yes. portion and all, you can dip and all. Correct. Uh, correct. Correct. What was that uh, length, sir? Length of the tank? You can make. Hello. Yeah, you can. See the height or uh, length? Your uh, he has mentioned six feet, no? Six feet. Yeah, wall length. Okay, okay. Wall height, wall height. Okay, okay, okay. Depending upon the availability of bamboo, actually, I don't know. Different species are available nowadays. you must yes, check yes, that uh, uh, and all the this product finished product corrugated sheets boards and all it is all available in bangalore sir yeah it is available you can just google it you can you can uh -huh. get the it is because uh, as as per uh, my knowledge in northeast of states a lot of people are uh, selling that finished product 
even so even research here is in located Bangalore, in Bangalore, one or two. Jagdish, this research. Yeah, yeah one or two people. Yes, sir. One or two people. One or two people. Uh, uh, one or two suppliers are there. Uh, definitely, you can get it from them. You can, you, you know, information is there in the. No, we'll share uh, his contact number. You please contact uh, him and uh, can take the material required. Uh, Arpita, you have any questions? No, Ajit Kumar. Ajit okay. Kumar. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. It was a wonderful uh, session, and thank you very much for giving so much of details in. Uh, Please such introduce a... yourself. Please introduce yourself. You are from. Uh, uh, I am from Bangalore, sir. I am a civil engineer, and uh, I am doing a specialized work like retrofitting and rehabilitation. Okay. But bamboo is. I am developing an interest in bamboo as a building material. Okay. So uh, that's the reason I joined this session thank you, thank to you. understand more about it. Uh, okay. sir i have a couple of questions one is that uh, uh, i could see that residential and uh, commercial buildings are done uh, with bamboo any industrial structures uh, you have an example sir no uh, industrial sheds are there industrial sheds are there wherein you know you can use the same wall and then you can go up to 9 feet and then you can raise that wall also you know one more floor see, so here typically you need to have a better bracings and then okay. proper connections joiner is very very important when you're doing it and then trusses can be you know bamboo trusses and then roofing sheet can be either metal coated ga sheet or bamboo mat coated sheet you can go see so, sir as presented in ppt a two story building that height you can think of what sir two story building yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, those yes. are the residential buildings so i was uh, just no even the shed also i've showed you know in okay. the ppt i've showed one of the shed Wherein, oh, uh, you know. I would have missed it. Yeah. So my second question is that even though after the treatment, if you use the uh, bamboo as a reinforcement, where we are splitting the bamboo and using it in the concrete surface, uh, there are two uh, concerns I want to understand: is that the bond between this uh, uh, mortar or a concrete to the bamboo? It is well proven because there are like walls and other things are there for last twenty twenty five years. So okay. we have not observed any of the problem. you know as such because we we treat uh, the bamboo also inside and also you know the bonding uh, gets developed because you don't uh, finish it so the the rough surface of the bamboo when you split it it gets yeah. bonded uh, with the cement cement mort that's oh, so means. roughness has to be removed means we have to create a roughness at the smooth face not necessarily the, because when you split it uh, you yeah. know the, the the all the other three sides will get bonded and Correct. also there is a you know uh, a little amount of binding wire used uh, to connect the various uh, members because when you make the strip grid you have a chicken mesh and also you have the you know binding wire to connect so that will take care of holding the uh, mortar to the bamboo and the three uh, sides of the roughness also will take care of the you know the, okay. the my third question is that because of the moisture for the swelling or contraction happens uh, does the moisture absorbed by bamboo in the system concrete system if a water percolates if it uh, penetrates in the concrete system and bamboo being a reinforcement will it uh, create an impact no no it acts as a, i can say it's a acts as a curing agent you know it's like it holds the water so whenever cement mort requires because of the hydra you need uh, you know water for hydration uh, no. so uh, obviously this uh, bamboo gives back uh, no. the the amount of uh, you know the contraction or expansion that happens to the bamboo is negligible i can see hello uh, please go ahead please go ahead uh, uh, sir this is arjun ramasamy from cmti Uh, i would like to ask you a question sir uh, regarding the bamboo go ahead go ahead hello please go uh, ahead sir, what, type, uh, what type of bamboo actually do you use sir what uh, there are different types of bamboos right for these uh, uh, construction purpose what uh, uh, bamboo type do you use and what is the cost difference from uh, uh, this uh, bamboo construction and normal construction sir Cost yeah, for normal and bamboo construction. Yeah, got it. Uh, for normal and bamboo construction, almost half the cost it will come. It depends on like where you are getting the bamboo from. 
Second thing is uh, there are number of species that are available and listed out in National Building Code as a construction materials. Like in Karnataka, if you see, you have a dendrocolum restrictors and bamboo sa bamboos and other things. So if you go to bamboo bazaar, he'll say like you know they want they, you know you know like which bamboo to choose like three inch to four inch dia and wall thickness is minimum twelve mm and then certain length. and it should not be crooked it should not be sweet so for whatever bamboo you take it you know you actually select it and then uh, grade it for various purposes like column beam uh, and uh, split you know this bamboo so no bamboo becomes waste when you purchase it so when you take it from forest department you just have to cut it out and then Just have to grade it out, like you know, for columns this material, for splits this, for bamboo this. So species is again, you know, as long as your wall thickness and uh, your dia and your you know sweetness satisfies, you can use any of the species. But most of the construction uh, species, what they've listed in the uh, NBC is based on the usage only. Like we use it for ladders and other things. The similar, uh, you know, that we hope that clarifies your. Yes. Yes, sir. So, yes. sir, this yes. is there is one question. Arpita, I got your question. Expected lifespan of bamboo rails yes, building to the other conventional. There are like buildings in Gunturu district of Andhra Pradesh. It's the the village name called Vinukonda. They've used uh, bamboo as a reinforcement in their houses, even for the columns, beams, and then these slabs. Last fifteen years, those buildings were intact. There was no problem, and also some of the places what I have visited and up there. So as long as you properly use this material as a reinforcement, properly treat it, the lifespan minimum it comes more than twenty years. That's what my. But sir, twenty years is very less compared to other reinforcements. You have seen that twenty-five years, na? He just dismantled. I have showed you one slide also initially. Yes, yes, so yes. it is like after twenty five years, you know. See now the problem is like you know we are staying in a RCC house. So now slowly people would like to go for or stay in a mud house. Tomorrow a natural calamity happens. There is see you know that top ten problems in the world. Energy is the top most problem in the world. So when you don't have yeah so when you don't have the resources when you have to use the locally available materials within your vicinity so there is no other way. so earlier you know when forests are only the the resources they used to cut timber they used to use the bamboo for the construction purpose so how many years they used to live by the time some new trend comes even the mobile we are changing every now and then okay so yeah, i don't know yeah. even though if you live yeah sorry you know the, yeah. the expectancy of any material is changing every now and then okay the house with the 20 years of uh, uh, you know uh, you know uh, life next time your next generation will come and say that i don't want to live in this house i just would like to dismantle and i would like to build something else okay so now based on our generation mindset 20 25 years is a, a bigger lifespan i can say any material if you, whether you take a you know mobile phone or a, a building or whatever unless it is a you know a, a structure which is a, like a public building where in uh, the minimum expectancy is more than 50 100 years then we have to go for energy intensive material and also you must this is my view of, uh, thermal comfort of the buildings thermal comfort is very very important whenever the buildings you want to put like resorts See, it is highly suitable. What sir? Resort sir. Yeah. yeah. So uh, even the, even we carried out thermal comfort studies on these buildings uh, by mounting sensors and all. When compared to RCC house, this these houses are like three to four degrees less temperature. Uh, you know, when compared to the RCC buildings. Arpita, hope I answered your question. Arpita. Yes, sir. I got that. Hope you agree with me. Yes, you are sir, not fully satisfied, answer. but. Yeah, yeah, got. It. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, uh, basically, when we are using the bamboo in RC structure, no sir. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can uh, hear that you. You can go ahead. In the lifespan of that RC column, are be uh, to be more than like forty years, fifty years, even for a G plus one, G plus two building. Correct. 
Even in this case, it is the uh, same I mean, as long as you. Yeah. Uh, the, see, we can my, see the corrosion there. Uh, you you correct, previously correct. told my, that my, bamboo, my, bamboo reinforcement will absorb some moisture. It will retain it. Correct. It will use it for a hydration. So correct. I thought the but, uh, lifespan will be less compared to the other reinforcement. Yeah, you have seen the arch uh, uh, roof, right? In the initial slides of my presentation. So yes, even sir, after absolutely. 25 years, they chipped out and then the arch roof is still seen and the person is standing yes, on the arch roof. So what I mean to say is, as long as you properly treat it, as long as you confine properly, see, there is a difference. Any natural material, when you use it, either you have to expose completely to the air or completely inside the water, or either confined completely or exposed completely. So what happens when you, whether it is a steel or any other material, when you expose half to outside exposure, Ex, uh, outside uh, exposure and uh, uh, half to inside confinement. So the corrosion or whatever problem due to the weathering and other things will come into picture. Any other questions? Sir, director, sir. Sir is not there. He is not there. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jagdish. Uh, there is a, a very highly informative on this bamboo as a material. Even we can reinforce and we can build uh, multi-story buildings, also two-story building. Even seven-story building also you have shown. Uh, it has done an uh, experimental basis, but uh, it, it yeah, has not been established. Wood, no, that's a wood building. building, sir. Huh? Yeah. Only that's a wood story. building. Wood building. Yeah. Wood building. Yeah. Thank you once again on behalf of uh, all participant and my center and director. I'll thank you wholeheartedly for taking your time and uh, sharing a lot of interesting information. This is a request came from Nirmiti Kendra engineers. And also, I'm very happy that uh, you, you have given a lot of input them. And uh, definitely, I request all the Nirmiti Kendra engineers to think of those who are staying in the coastal uh, western guards where the metal is available. And you can reduce the cost of the building, uh, minimize the cement, concrete, material as a building, and uh, steel because the advantage and cost reduction is there. And, uh, thank you once again to all of you. And uh, thank you, uh, Sanat Kumar, the online coordinator of this, today's program. Thank you once again for all the uh, participants of Nirmiti Kendra Engineers, project directors, and CMTI trainers. Thank you once again to all of you. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you. I will for share the so much details. Much. I will uh, share the contact details. Uh, any, uh, any additional information required, all the engineers can contact him. Any technology related issues you can discuss with him. Uh, take the advantage of all these uh, lectures. See, that is one of the reasons why upskilling and reskilling, not only offline, we are doing online also. So, we think you are inviting all the special uh, experts in that area and you have to make use further your career planning, uh, construction activities of this area. Thank you once again. Thank you. Professor. Thank you, sir. I'm yeah. signing out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Two hours. Sanat.